All right. So uh, thank you, Terry, for coming on and co-hosting with me because I've had this concept in my head a little bit and uh, I thought it'd be fun to talk about it on Blab and have a discussion around it because I don't know what it looks like. I'm just throwing things out there because <laughs> I have this concept that um, we, we do a lot of broadcasting in our marketing. So it's a lot of uh, going out and telling people, this is what I do, this is what I do, come see me, come talk to me, come do this, come do that. Mm -hmm. And we broadcast emails, we broadcast in social media, and, and we're constantly broadcasting out into the world. And one of the things that I've learned about myself recently is that when I listen, I am much more likely to come up with a really cool idea or a really cool concept. Um, mm -hmm where I'm able to help in a much better way and a much more uh, effective way too. So I thought I would throw out this concept of what if we could listen in our marketing more than broadcasting? What might that look like? How mm -hmm. might we be able to do that? You know, what are the possibilities for listening versus broadcasting out to people? Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that to start off with, and I'm curious to know what your thoughts are to begin with on that conversation. Well, give me an example. So my, my brain doesn't always work like everybody else's. <laughs> and someone will say something and I'll think it'll hit me totally different than they even meant. So give me an example. Uh, okay, so an example of listening in marketing versus broadcasting. So yes. an example of listening is responding, I guess was, is a word I would use. Going on to social media groups and listening to the conversation, listening to what's going on, and then responding to that versus gotcha. going into the group and going, hey, this is what I do and come see me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand. It's, it's what I thought you meant. Um, well, I think both um, listening and broadcasting are really important, but in a Facebook group or on social media, I think you really do have to listen it, because it's not all just about what you put out there. It's a conversation. It's social. Yeah. So you see what others are putting out there, you listen and then you respond. And I think when you respond in a lot of ways, you're able to show your area of expertise and uh, your qualifications and your care and concern for their business a lot more effectively than you would if you were just, hey, because I've seen that in groups. There's one particular group I'm in where one person never, never really responds, but every single chance she gets, she throws in a marketing <laughs> ploy, which is against the rules for the, the rules. Group. Yeah, most groups but, won't even let so, you do that. Right. And she slips them in in the weirdest ways. So she's not listening. So she's not being effective. And right. she's going to end up getting kicked out of the group. <laughs> yeah. Know? And that's going to stop yeah. the conversation real quick. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think you're I think we could do a lot more listening than we do now. I, I think so too. And I think there's gotta be a way to stretch it out beyond social media too. Um, social media, you can find the places to sit and listen. And I listen um, to other people, like on social media, I'm listening to other people who are in my industry. I'm listening to people who are potential clients and I'm, I'm listening to people who are not my potential clients, but who talk right. about my industry and all that. So those are really great places on social media to listen. There's gotta be a way to take it off social media though and do it more in our daily marketing because we do marketing in so many places especially digitally i mean offline i find it easy to listen you yeah. go to a networking meeting you can sit in front of somebody you can ask them some questions and listen right yeah but digitally, yeah. it's a lot harder. I, I think through email, it's a lot harder. I think through uh, our channels of promotion, when we have other people promote for us and things like that, I think it's really hard to do that. So um, what are your thoughts, Terry? Yeah, it, I mean, I think if you're, if you're, like you said, it's easy to do on social media. Mm -hmm. 
because you can join in. You have lots of opportunities to join in and ask questions and respond. And the same thing in person where email, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can really, at least to me, I don't know if you can really do it in email unless you combine a little bit of social media in there. Like maybe you do a blog post about, um, about something and then you ask, you know, Terry froze up. On no, yes. Am I not here? Yes. It was open if anybody wants to jump in. Here we go. Terry, you froze up on us. Oh, see now you're audio only for me. And <laughs> I've I've got a I've got a hard connect here. So oh, it was me who froze oh. up. <laughs> there you go. I'm not the culprit this so time. <laughs> I missed everything you just said after uh in email. What I said was, um, it is more difficult with an email, and I'm not really sure that you can do it without just a little bit of social media involvement. Like, say you do a blog post about something, and you ask at the end of your post, a question. what are your concerns? Okay. What are your, um, what do you... Um, what if we just did like an email blast that was just a question? That might be a really good idea. Nobody ever does that. Nobody you know. does that. <laughs> no. But but what if we did yeah. that? I think that would be awesome. That's definitely something to do. Just but but to do it in a way that you're not saying, what can I help you with? Or how could you use my services? Right. Because um, that's broadcasting so, still. That's still saying, this is exactly. me. And it's all about me. That's still all about me. And that's broadcasting out. Yes. But, and there's just, there's a, a fine line there. So I don't know. I think it would take a little bit of thought. Mm -hmm. But I don't see why you couldn't. Just send any. You know. Yeah. I mean, and we, how bad is it to send that out like a, graphic thing i mean because because you want people to read it you don't just yeah. i know i feel like if i put an email out there that just has a written text question it's just one little question i feel like i'm just wasting email space right <laughs> yeah but you're really not because i think if someone sees an email and of course one they have to open it so right. you've got your headline you know and i i hate those you won't believe what happened next yeah. headlines. So you, you've got to do something that's going to make them open it. But I tend to think that if it's just a one-liner, they're go, going to go, whoa, I can read that really fast. Yeah. And they'll read it. Huh. Because I know yeah. that once, once I stopped doing the long newsletters, I had the long drawn out newsletters with a big article and this and this and that and that. A terrible open rate mm -hmm. and then I switched to once a week with a short tip mm -hmm. because it was short people would open it because it was the the attitude that it's easier for me to go ahead and just read it yeah than to put it in the, in the read later folder right so I think the same thing could hold true with maybe just a one or two liner in an email people might say oh I'll just read it now yeah I have one quick question and the subject could even read one quick question for you. You know, yes. it doesn't even have to be any more than that. How interesting. Exactly. Exactly. That could be fun. I might have to try that next week yeah, with yeah. my email. I just throw out just a question. Um, and, and it, the it, trick is, the trick is going to be thinking of a question that's going to be yeah. of service to your list. Exactly. And not promoting yourself. And not, yeah. That's, and that's, it, you know, because the first thing that comes to my mind is the things that are that feel so manipulative to me are things like if you ask the question, so what's your biggest challenge right now? And that kind of thing, you know, that's that's more my marketing research and that's not the place to do that. Uh, right. You know, so it would have to be something that's actually like really interesting to them that they would want to answer um, something that's of topic, like top of mind. And so you have to really think about what's top of mind for your clients, what's right now going on in their world you want to address mm -hmm. and, and have a discussion around. 
Um, and you could always copy it over to a blog post or something, but you want to, if you're going to do it in email, it needs to be an intimate question, something that they wouldn't answer publicly too. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Something that asks them to like really share with you, like really open up a little bit, like not a lot because they're not, because they don't know you that well, not all of them. Some of them do. Um, so you have to yeah. pay attention to the fact that you have a wide range of, of connection experience with you, but something that just gets them thinking and, and hopefully responding. I wonder what would happen. That'd be interesting. Good. And I, I think I've been thinking more about how you don't even, I just lost my train of thought. Um, it, the answer wouldn't really even have to be something that, you know, like you said, would be research marketing or help you in your mm -hmm. marketing or anything like that. It doesn't really even have to, it can be completely off topic from mm -hmm. anything you do or could provide to them, but it's just a way to bring that, um, that social, connection aspect yes and into your email where okay i can answer this she's not asking a question so she can figure out what the next best thing to promote to me is going to be yeah she's just asking a question and you know i think a lot of unrelated topics and questions can really help people connect with you just as easily as anything else. And it would give you a chance to listen. See, that's the thing. That's what I want it to be. I want it to chance. I want to listen to what's mm -hmm. going on for them. I want to listen to the people on my list and hear what they have to say. And it needs yeah. to be that. It needs to be a question that draws that out, that allows them to speak so I can hear what's going on for them. Or I can hear yeah. something that I can connect to and something that I can listen to and hear and connects to me. Um, I think that's important to do. Yeah, because your list is one way. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, and I, your list is one way, email is one way, even if you're just, well, e email can be two way if you're, if you're doing just a, a regular email to somebody. Um, but can't, can we like change that though? Can we make like our lists be more like that though? Can we like, I don't see why not. Make it more of a conversation in our email versus a, because I have conversations via email all the time with colleagues and friends and, and people like that. We have threads that go on for a while and I wonder what it would be like to, but the problem is, is that only one person responds. So it's a one person yes. conversation, but it could mm -hmm. be an ongoing conversation. I, right. It's still a conversation. Hmm. Where when you go on, I, I think it's kind of like the difference between blab and video. Okay, say more. Your list would be video. Your list would be um, one way. Mm -hmm. Here's the camera, that god awful camera, <laughs> staring you in the face, showing you all of your flaws, you know, and all of that stuff. And there's really no, um, the only time you're going to get a response is if someone leaves a comment. Right. Same thing with your list right now. The only yeah. response is if someone responds. Where Blab is interactive. Right. Blab, you've got conversations going on with Blab is social media. Right. For some reason, that camera is staring you in the face, but Blab doesn't seem so scary because yeah. it's not just focusing on you. So if we could take that same concept and move Quiet. it over to our list just a little bit. We're obviously not going to get the same here. You want to jump in a seat, you know, type of response. Right. But I think we might uh, find a way to at least get some conversations going because that's, yeah. that's what is going to build the relationship. If you don't build a relationship, you know, and then it's, it's not, yeah, it's not worth it. And, yeah. and email Why feels like it. Email does feel like a broadcast platform to me. And that's the thing. I want to change that to more of a conversational that platform. Yeah. And yeah. I think it might be fun with questions or some sort of thread to get people to respond. And, and you know, I hate the words using to get people to respond. It's like, I want to ask. I want to ask for a response. I want to ask for that. One thing you could do, um, you could do a blog post with that question. And in your email, maybe say, you know, if you'd like to see what others think, 
you know, can make it multi-channel, kind yeah. of a multi-channel thing. I've also asked this question over on my blog because I really want to know what you think. think. Mm -hmm. You know, and who knows? Maybe they'll respond. Or does that turn that back into a broadcast? Yeah, it, that's what I was wondering. I was like, does that make it a broadcast when you multi-channel it? Does that now turn it back into a broadcast? Um, I don't think I don't think we're going to be able to avoid the broadcast, broadcast. part completely. Okay. But um, I'm going to fix my light because I really <laughs> suck here. <laughs> it's kind of oh, dark. A there little bit. A little, a little bit. bit not more. much. Now I can see your face better. There's that camera. Uh, you know, I think, <laughs> I think I think you're always going to have the broadcast aspect, no matter how you look at it, at least in a tiny bit, you know, unless, of course, you're at an event and you're sitting at yeah. a table and you're asking questions or unless you're in a group, you know, a Facebook group and yeah. you can respond to questions or even social media. But I, I think um, I think email is going to be a, a hard nut to crack. You know, it's. Um, but I wonder what it would be like little... to think about what a networking meeting might look like and then start asking some of the questions you might if you were sitting across from them and take that into the email format and see what happens with that. I'll have to I've play with a, that. I've got a question in my brain right now from a, a blog post that um, one, of my um, one of my clients put out. Uh -huh. And it, it poses a I'm not going to tell you what it is, of course. Okay, if I use it, I'm going <laughs> to send it out to my list as a question. If I can. Yeah. yeah. But no, I, I think, um, I, I, I don't think listening could bring anything negative to your business at all. And really, it, mm, it should, be, should be listening. You should be, if you're not listening, mm -hmm. how do you know? How do you how do you know what you're doing? How do you know if if what you're putting out there is even of any interest to anybody? How do you know sure. what your um, your prospective clients' um, pains are? Right. You well, know, and when how, you're listening, you know anything. When you're listening, you can come up with a response too. I mean, uh, I just did this uh, this week. I I've, I've been listening in a a group, and there have been a a lot of. Um, negative comments about the coaching industry and that group um and being i work in the coaching industry as do you um, i take it's not a coaching group then no it's not it's a non-coaching group and people people have been slamming coaches and i've just been listening to it and absorbing it and just kind of taking it in and kind of listening for what is going on underneath those challenges to the coaching industry mm -hmm. and then it popped for me an idea of this is why this is happening and this is how we can change it and that created a whole blog post so if we listen we're responding then to what's really going on and not just making stuff up because we like to make stuff up and like to think we know everything and you know yeah. i mean <laughs> and we broadcast that out to the world but it changes it from a broadcast of this is what i know to something you're literally responding to that's actually happening in the real world mm -hmm. and and making it more that way too so more of a conversation piece more interesting to people and more like oh this is what we can do um because you can pinpoint the problem that you're actually seeing that they're also mm -hmm. seeing when you're listening for that yeah and i, I think that's kind of interesting that people are making negative comments about the coaching industry because what I, I do a um on my blog i do a um it's so, um, what do we call it? A when, Wednesday wisdom. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's something I do on Wednesdays. And it's just, you know, uh, just a comment about, you know, wisdom and business. And one of the ones I have scheduled for either next week or the week after is about why you need to hire a coach or a mentor. Mm -hmm. You know, the, yeah, you know, why you do it. Mm -hmm. And why you should do it. I mean, even coaches hire coaches. Yes. And it's not because they like, they're like, oh, there's somebody in my industry. I'm going to go throw money at no. <laughs> They understand the value. Yeah. You know, and it's the same with virtual assistants. Why do we hire other VAs to handle some of our own tasks and yeah. things? Because we see the benefits. Right. 
you know, so it's, but yeah, um, you can learn a lot. I've learned a lot of things I didn't like in groups. Yeah. Um, you can, you can learn about a, a lot about a specific industry by joining a group that is primarily for their industry. Mm -hmm. And you see the things they say behind the scenes. And sometimes I think, wow, <laughs> you're a pompous group, aren't you? <laughs> you know, uh -huh. so it's, um, it's really interesting. And I, I think as far as listening versus broadcasting, I, I really think a Facebook group is probably one of the best ways to places listen. to do that. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think maybe And the best place to get questions for your email too. Exactly. <laughs> well, and I also think it's good yeah. fodder for any marketing. So, uh when you're coming mm -hmm. from a re place of response versus a re a place of I need to get this out there, you're creating a Rebuttal. whole different conversation that way. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. not a it's not about me now. It's a response to something that I'm seeing going on. So, I think the more we listen, the more we'll respond and the more response we do, the more interest we'll get. I think that's a good exactly. booster in that too. So yeah. great. Yeah. I, even though social media is supposed to be a social platform, mm -hmm. it's where you, um, to me, it is, it's where you build relationships. Yes. I mean, that's, it, it's not a fast, get it out there. Ooh, I want to buy your stuff. Yeah. It's you have to build relations or relationships and you've got to establish that no like and trust factor. And I think we get to a point though, that we do stop listening. Yeah. You know, it's, we're quick to jump in when we see somebody say something It's like, Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Rebuttal. Yeah. You know, it, it's a, a big rebuttal thing and that doesn't build relationships mm -hmm. that just you know kind of adds That's you get lost in the in the responses anyway but absolutely yeah if i think if, if more people would actually listen which i'm sure i'm guilty of the same thing oh i am too i don't I do it either <laughs> I don't. Start listening more i'm just starting to think yeah. about this and just starting to do this more so i mean it's it's like wait i and i am you know i like to sit and listen and it's how i I actually work best and I, my work is best when I'm listening versus when I'm broadcasting too. And I think that I'm not the only one out there that's like that. There are some people who are, you know, great at broadcasting and they do wonderful at attracting people in that way. I'm not one of those people. Um, so I think changing it up so that I can honor the fact that I'm not a broadcaster and I'm more of a listener. I think that's uh, important mm -hmm. for me. And I think that there's a lot of other people out yeah. there like that too, who need to be doing more of that. And I think they'll jump up their, their uh, response rate by doing that. So. Well, I think even the really good broadcasters, um, you know, some of the big names you see out there that are broadcasting constantly. I think one of the reasons why they have such a high success rate is because their name is so big. Yeah more people see them. They see, oh, so-and-so has that. They're big. Mm -hmm. And that's, a lot of that is the attraction. Mm -hmm. I think if they would listen a little bit more, however, um, and then respond, I don't see how it would hurt them. No, and, and it might even help and make it even... A it might help my opinion of some of them. Yeah. <laughs> You, know. you personally, me too, probably too. I might listen to, the, I might actually listen to them more if they listened mm -hmm. more in their marketing, if they listened before they spoke more. Um, yes. I, and if they practice what they preach. Well, that too, that's a whole other conversation. I know, <laughs> I, know I know, but yeah, um, I, I really think if they just listened more, yeah, they would be um, a lot better off. I agree. I tend to shy away from the big names. I do. And I think it's, and I don't like to attend the events where there's just a ton of big names because I think they're there more for them than they are for the people that are attending. They come across that way anyway. They may not be at the heart of it, but they yeah. come across that way. And part of that might be because they are broadcast, 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 broadcast. And not listening. Yeah. yeah. And the more you broadcast, the more 
people just tune out too these days, especially now because people are like starting to see that they see so much broadcast that they're just like, I'm done with that. You know, they, they want connection. They want people to listen to them. I think they want yeah. us to connect with them in that way. So I think it's a good direction to go right now for everybody. We're, we're hit on so many different fronts. Yeah. You know, you've got all the typical social media platforms, right. you know, Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. And now we've got um, Instagram, which is really a primarily broadcast yep. because there's very little listening you can do on LinkedIn. Same thing on Pinterest, mm -hmm. broadcast. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter is even becoming more broadcast. Um, Blab is kind of helping that a little I bit, know. but Twitter is still very broadcast these days. I like I like hearing what somebody's going to have for lunch. You know, it opens a conversation. Yeah, I miss the whole, yeah, we used to have so many great conversations on Twitter about stuff. People would say something they were thinking about and we'd be like, oh, that's cool. Let me talk, you know, and they'd jump in and we'd have and it would, a whole yes. conversation around it. And now it's just like, exactly. buy for me, buy for me, buy for me, buy for me. Yeah. And that's what's kind of killed the Twitter and platform. Periscope. It's, it's broadcast. It's very broadcast. Uh, that's why I went to Blab instead of Periscope because I considered both. Yeah. And, I don't like Periscope. And I'm not, I'm, like I said, I'm not a broadcaster. I need to have a conversation. I need to have you here, no. Terry, for me to have a conversation with, for this to be any kind of fun for me. And if it's not fun, of course, I'm not going to do it. So. <laughs> and not scary. Yeah. You know, not scary because it's not all on you. Right. <laughs> you know, you're, it's, people aren't just looking at you. They're listening to the conversation. And conversations are better than one way broadcasting, if you ask me. Exactly. I think they always will. Be. I agree. I think, but I stand by my first statement. I think they're both important. Yes. You need to broadcast. Yes. You can't just listen. You've got to broadcast. Exactly. If you don't broadcast, you're not going to be visible. But people aren't going to know what if you you're have. Not visible, I mean, they don't know. Yeah, you they're to not going to see your stuff. You have to make the ask at some point. You have to do that. Yeah. And that's the broadcast yeah. part of it. Is you have to do that at some point. Mm -hmm. But uh, it doesn't have to yeah. all be that. But then you got to listen. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I, the reason this all came up was because I was doing a major campaign. And, and I was constantly just broadcasting out about the campaign and the thing that I was doing and all of that. And I was like, okay, I'm so tired of broadcasting. I just stop this. You know, it needs to be a good balance between them. I, mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, and some people can do more listening and, and less broadcasting and some people need to do more, it depends on your market. It depends on who's responding and how you're getting the response. But um, I think this is something we can put into practice and see what happens. Yeah. So thank you. I'm, I'm curious. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. I'd love to see how we can move this into email. Yeah. Let's, let's try it and see what happens. And then maybe we'll yeah. come back and do another blab about what happened. <laughs> The worst that can happen is nothing. nothing. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the best that could happen is all of a sudden we open up a new way to communicate mm -hmm. where, I mean, you might, even if you send an email out to your list, your entire list, and you get one person to comment. That's, that's still, still a conversation, conversation that you didn't have before. Yes. You, you might learn something. They may never become a yep. client. They may never do anything That's else, right. but you may learn something. They may learn something. And there you had a conversation. And you never know where that'll go. That can go anywhere. And that could be a new client for know. you down the line for all you know. Down the line. Yep. yep. All right. I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much, Terry, for coming on and, and joining me. I very much appreciate it. This was a fun conversation. And yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks. Made me start thinking. Uh, good. I'm glad. Me too. Yeah. So that that was why I wanted to do it. And everything worked. Yes. And we had technology everything happiness. Worked. I, yes. <laughs> so far, so good. So far, yeah, so yeah. Good. So, all right. Yeah. Thank you.